الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله continue on in our uh, مجالس منهجية uh, one of the things that we need to know and understand is that this deen is not built upon taqlid it's not built upon blind following people sheikhs, a couple of sheikhs a group of sheikhs, a cult, a sect, whatever uh, personalities, ideologies, whatever doctor so and so, doctor so and so or whatever. So it's very important to know and understand this deen is based on uh, knowledge. It's based on the book and it's based on the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi sallam. And it's based upon the minhaj, the methodology of the salaf al-salih. Ridwan Allahi alayhi, meaning beginning with the sahabat rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, radiyallahu ta'ala wa ma'in. They're the rules of the salaf. They are the heads of the salaf. So our dawah is headed by of course, it's headed by what was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and what the Prophet alayhi salatu wa told us, did, his actions, his sunnah, and how the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and Majma'in understood the religion and the tabi'in with about tabi'in. That's, you know, where our leadership truly comes from. You know, that that's how we... we, we understand the precepts of Islam. And so, therefore, it is not permissible to take your whole religion from blind following people. And in fact, there are some things which are not permissible. For example, the issues of Tawheed. You can't just blind follow and say, well, you know, Sheikh so-and-so said that Allah should be worshipped alone. No, you need to know why and where this comes from, that this is what the Qur'an states. You know, all throughout the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about himself. He says, for example, he says, لَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةَ الرَّسُولِينَ النِّعْرُدُ اللَّهِ وَشْتَنِبُ We sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and to avoid those things worship besides Allah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُوا الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ لَلِي عَبُدُونَ I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. So then we know that the divine purpose, the reason we're created, is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is not based on taqlid. We don't say, well, Sheikh Fuzan said, uh, Imam bin Ba'ath said, Imam Tijaniya said, Imam um, uh, Abu Mansur or Maturidi said, uh, 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 Abdullah Hariri al-Habashi al said, we don't, we don't say those things, but rather, those things we need to know. We need to know where this comes. We need to know the dalil. We need to know the evidence for this. At least have it mujmil. You know, we need to at least have a general understanding. So that way, you know, this is your relationship with your Lord. This is worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that way you don't fall into the trap of worshiping men and being misled by men. So... And this doesn't take away from the scholars, but you don't raise them to a level that, you have, that you're worshiping them, you're praising them to such an extent, even and following them in their mistakes, or something which is clearly deviant, or whatever the case may be. So, Ahl Sunnah emphasizes the importance of knowledge, and that's why you find in many of the books of the Salaf, uh, and the asal of those books is their, their Islamic knowledge. They are codifying the creed and the methodology of Ahl Sunnah. And that's why... <clears throat> For example, we see in the Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the importance of, of knowledge. For example, and, and fiqh fi deen, Because fiqh fi deen is going to teach you how to practice your religion. Fiqh fi deen is how you practice your deen. You know, that, that, that is... So that means you have knowledge. That means you're not following someone, but you are following the knowledge. You're following the book and the sunnah. You're following what Allah Azza wa Jal wants. And what his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam did and wanted and so on and so forth. So, with that being the case, for example, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and that's why the importance here is what we're trying to emphasize is not to blind follow, but just have mutabah, trying to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as much as possible, as much as you understand. Of course, you're going to ask ulama and there are things you're not going to know the delil for and you will be having a, a, a degree of taqlid because you trust them. They're known people of the Sunnah, not known people of Bidah. But you're going to not be able to research every mas'ala and so forth. So, the Prophet said, Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. So that lets us know that the usul of Ahl Sunnah is gaining fiqh fiddin. Part of that is gaining fiqh fiddin. And that's why the books are written 
The books are written there to be studied, to be codified, to be understood, to be practiced and implemented and passed on. Da'wah illallah azza wa jal. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, مَنْ سَلَقَ تَرِيكًا يَلْتَلْمَسُهُ بِهِ عِلْمٍ صَحَّ لَاللَّهُ لَهُ تَرِيكًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, uh, Allah will make easy for him the path to paradise. And so that is also from the usul of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, is learning ilm, ilm al nafi' beneficial knowledge, which is knowledge of the Book and the Sunnah. Uh, and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Those are issues of minhajiyah, itiqadi, and, and, and it's based on knowledge, not based on blind following. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ala Nabiya Muhammad, Wa Ala Alihi Wasallam.